Three Starship launch pads are now in motion, and the newest development comes from Florida, not Starbase. With approval granted for Starship operations at SLC-37, SpaceX has unlocked a major expansion in the center of the world's aerospace hub. It's a milestone that signals a dramatic increase in future activity and a new level of ambition for the program. How transformative is this approval, and what challenges must still be overcome before operations accelerate? We'll break it down in today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX is implementing major upgrades across all of its Starship infrastructure, both at Starbase and in Florida, especially now that the V-2 era has officially come to an end. Pad 2 at Starbase is expected to become operational soon, followed by Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center and Pad 1 back at Starbase. Yet while these locations have been the center of attention for months, another site has remained unusually quiet. That site is SLC-37. For most of the year, SLC-37 has shown little visible change. After SpaceX announced it would take over the launch complex, the most notable activity was the demolition of the former ULA building. Once the debris was cleared away, progress appeared to come to a halt. However, that silence was not due to inactivity. It was because SpaceX's long-term development plans for the complex were undergoing a detailed review. Now that quiet period is officially over. Starship operations at SLC-37 have been fully approved. SpaceX confirmed the news directly, stating, We have received approval to develop Space Launch Complex 37 for Starship operations at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Construction has started. The company added its appreciation to the Department of the Air Force, Space Launch Delta 45, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for their roles in completing the environmental review. Musk followed his own message, congratulating the SpaceX team and thanking the U.S. Space Force. This approval involved many powerful agencies Unlike LC-39A, which leans heavily toward NASA missions, SLC-37 is under the authority of military organizations, specifically the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Space Force. Their involvement signals that this site will support a very different category of missions. SLC-37 is poised to become a dedicated hub for national security launches instead of primarily supporting scientific or commercial flights. SpaceX made that intention clear, saying that with three Starship pads in Florida, the company will be prepared to support America's national security needs as well as the Artemis program. The inclusion of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service also highlights the environmental challenges associated with building new launch infrastructure and SpaceX's efforts to address them head-on. Access to national security missions represents a massive opportunity for Starship. This is the same sector where Falcon rockets have completed, competed fiercely with ULA and, more recently, Blue Origin. Once Starship is ready to enter this arena, SpaceX's influence will expand even further. Unlike commercial launches, national security missions typically come with long-term high-value contracts. If Starship demonstrates capability and reliability, these contracts will bring not only revenue but also increased trust, which is crucial for the vehicle's future development. As for construction, SpaceX has already begun work at SLC-37. With demolition finished, crews can now begin preparing the site for two full Starship launch pads. SpaceX has provided a high-level overview of the design. First, large foundation pits will be excavated, steel reinforcement and massive concrete pours will form the base structure for each launch tower. After the tower foundations are complete, tower segments will arrive and be stacked one by one. Mechazilla arms will then be attached, which will eventually enable catching operations. Alongside tower construction, engineers will build the flame trench. This involves digging a deep, wide cavity, installing a steel framework, and pouring concrete to form the core structure. Eventually, the flame bucket will begin installed inside the trench. Once the trench and tower base are ready, teams will begin creating the above-ground systems, including the OLM platform, the booster QD frame, and all necessary plumbing. After that, the full OLM and QD systems will be installed. Small elements such as cabling, valves, and monitoring equipment will be added throughout the build. Although this overall process reflects earlier Starship pad construction methods, SLC-37 is unique because SpaceX is building two complete Starship pads simultaneously at the same complex. This is something the company has never done before. It truly represents a two-towers development effort. Because this is a brand new dual pad construction, the timeline is expected to extend into mid-2027. The scale is far larger than any pad build SpaceX has attempted in the past, but the company now has enough experience to move quickly and efficiently. 
Once completed, the SLC-37 site will dramatically expand SpaceX's launch capacity. Counting all three Starship pads in Florida, along with the two at Starbase, SpaceX will have at least five operational Starship launch pads. No other rocket family in history has ever had this level of infrastructure. Currently, the Falcon fleet operates from three pads, LC-39A, SLC-40, and SLC-4E, with SLC-6 potentially being added soon. The addition of five Starship pads will position SpaceX with the largest and most capable launch network in the world. In terms of raw capability, Starship will become the rocket with the most launch pads in operation globally, surpassing Falcons 3 and far exceeding typical launch systems, which usually operate from one or two pads. The number of pads alone gives Starship tremendous potential for high-frequency operations. Falcon rockets prove this today. With only three pads, Falcon has already become the world's most frequently launched rocket family, surpassing 150 flights this year. As more pads come online, that number will only rise. Starship will take this concept much further. SLC-37 is planned to support up to 76 Starship launches per year, which means up to 152 landings, since both the booster and the ship will return. This kind of launch rate is unheard of. It reflects the system's design as a fully reusable, fast turnaround vehicle, unlike Falcon boosters, which still require more extensive refurbishment between flights. And SLC-37 is only one part of the system. LC-39A is expected to support around 44 Starship launches per year. Starbase may eventually support 25 or more. Combined, these numbers reveal the launch cadence needed for future missions. Building an orbital refilling system for deep space missions will require dozens of Starship flights in rapid succession. Sending fleets of ships to Mars during favorable windows may require up to 10 Starship launches per day across multiple pads. Starship's infrastructure is being designed to make such ambitions feasible. Landing operations will be even more active. Since each Starship flight involves two returning stages, landing events will happen at twice the frequency of launches. SLC-37's design includes numerous landing zones, and Starship may also use offshore drone ships for additional recovery capacity. Once all pads are operational, the landing network will be one of the busiest rocket recovery systems ever created. If you're excited for what comes next, respond with the word UNBELIEVABLE in the comment section down below. Then, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to continue following SpaceX's incredible development journey. SpaceX now faces a wide range of new challenges as it moves forward. Even with approval from major government and military agencies, there are still significant hurdles ahead, particularly from its competitors in the launch industry. Rival companies will certainly be concerned about the aggressive launch cadence SpaceX is planning for Starship. Their first concern will be congestion. A system that launches and lands as frequently as Starship will require constant transport of rockets, fuel, and support equipment. This level of activity can interfere with nearby operations and disrupt scheduling for other launch providers. Airspace management will also become far more complicated. Starship will launch often, but it will also perform continuous returns, which is something no other company Company does at such scale. This will force airspace restrictions that competitors may pressure regulators to limit or adjust. Another concern will be the environmental and mechanical impact of frequent Starship operations. A rocket with such immense thrust, launching many times per year, can create strong vibrational effects across the region. Competing companies may claim that these effects risk damaging their infrastructure or launch pads. On top of that, many providers will worry about market pressure. A powerful, fully reusable system like Starship launching at a high rate could overshadow their vehicles. This could reduce their chances of earning major government contracts or commercial opportunities. Because of these factors, it's likely that competing companies will attempt to impose restrictions on Starship, such as limiting the number of launches allowed each year, or placing constraints on launch windows and landing schedules. This is not a challenge SpaceX can solve alone. They will need support from agencies such as the U.S. Space Force, NASA, and DOD, as well as the FAA, in order to protect the operational flexibility needed for Starship's future missions. How this balance plays out remains to be seen. The second major challenge comes from within SpaceX itself. The number of starships required to sustain the company's vision will be extremely high. 
To support a heavy launch cadence from Florida, SpaceX will need a constant supply of vehicles. In the early stages, they will likely transport ships and boosters from Starbase. However, long-term operations demand local production. Florida must eventually become autonomous. That means a full manufacturing ecosystem will be required on site. So far, only the first structure, the Gigabay, has begun construction. More Star Factory buildings will be needed to achieve steady production. Manufacturing systems take time to build, often more than a year, so construction must accelerate quickly if Florida is to support lunar and Martian missions beginning around 2027. Without local production, launch operations in Florida will not be able to operate at the scale planned. Another critical factor is fuel. A launch system as active as Starship requires huge quantities of liquid methane and liquid oxygen. SpaceX will need an extensive transport network or, ideally, a dedicated fuel production facility near the launch site. Creating that kind of infrastructure is essential, because supply interruptions could bring operations to a halt. Proper storage, cooling, and delivery systems must be built now to ensure steady fueling for dozens of launches and landings every month. Altogether, these challenges reveal how many logistical systems must be strengthened before Starship can operate at full capacity. SpaceX has received the green light to build and launch at SLC-37, but approval is only the beginning. To prepare for the active future they envision, SpaceX must build production lines, expand fuel supply operations, strengthen partnerships with government agencies, and navigate competitive pressure. The work must begin immediately because the timelines for national security missions Artemis support flights and eventual Mars operations are approaching fast. Starship stands alone in scale and ambition, and the expansion to SLC-37 with two dedicated pads marks a profound leap in its operational reach. Before long, this site will transform into another active hub, launching and recovering the world's largest rockets in a steady, relentless cadence. It'll serve as a gateway to the moon, Mars, and destinations once confined to imagination. Nothing in modern aerospace comes close. As SpaceX pushes through each obstacle, a new era draws closer. And when it arrives, the only question is whether you are ready to see it unfold. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.